Hey, welcome everybody. This is Brent English, president of Robust Tools, and today I'm here in Sam Angelo's really well-equipped shop. And Sam's one of our favorite dealers, and he's going to do yet another YouTube video for you. So please enjoy. Today's video, I'm going to take a little closer look at a negative rake scraper. And what I'm going to cover, the geometry of a negative rake scraper, a little bit on sharpening, and a lot on showing you some approaches for using a negative rake scraper. Well, the ultimate guide to the negative rake scraper, I don't know about that. But in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of my negative rake scrapers that I use in my shop. I'm going to show you some uh, angles that I think are pretty important for a negative rake scraper. I'm going to show you sharpening. And then also, I'm going to show some of these tools in action on a piece of wood like I'm showing you right now. Okay, and what I will do in the description is I've got my, my chapter time codes listed. And if you see a topic you want to go to, you just click on the time that's to the left of that topic and you can go right to there. And if you want to do nothing but just see me turning with some of these scrapers, that's all right. You can just jump to those topics and go there. So. So what I'm showing you right now are some of the tools I'll be using in this video later on. So stay tuned. There's a lot of information in this video and I think it'll be beneficial for you. Thanks. Now part of this lesson has to do with terminology. What I call a conventional scraper has a flat top and one bevel. Negative rake scraper has a bevel on the top and a bevel on the bottom. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. First of all, I'm going to show you the possibility of a scraper. This is a side view of a scraper. So a traditional scraper would have one bevel and a flat top. And this one at 90 degrees, well, it just wouldn't work very well. Okay, so we're going to kind of eliminate that to begin with. This is a 90 degree angle and, and we could take that and put it anywhere in the front of that, that scraper and it wouldn't work very well because that included angle is 90 degrees. Now this particular chart shows a side view of a tool like a skew chisel that has a symmetrical grind. On the top it has a bevel of 25 degrees and a corresponding bevel on the bottom of 25 degrees for an included angle of 50 degrees. Now let's take a look at some tools. All right, the first category that I'm going to show you are tools with a symmetrical grind. This one is a 3 8 inch wide beading and parting tool. And I'm going to show you how I sharpen one of these tools in just a second. So there it is. Same uh, bevel angle on the top and the bottom, and these tools are all ground to a 50 degree included angle. So this is the widest one. Here's another uh, parting tool, which I really wouldn't use that for parting. It's too wide. It's probably a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to show you how I grind this one. Again, uh, two bevels at 25 degrees for an included angle of 50 degrees. This is a 1 8 inch parting tool. And these tools can be used as cutters and, and also as a scraping tool. They have two bevels, so they're a negative rake scraper. And finally, this is probably a tool that most of us have. This is an 8 inch parting tool. Under the category of symmetrical grinds, we can put a skew chisel, all right? Looking at a side view, the bevel on the bottom and the bevel on the top both have the same angle. All right, they're easy to sharpen. And let me show you a couple places where I would use a skew chisel. Now, after I've roughed in my tenon right here, I'm going to take my, my skew chisel and refine that. You could probably just turn the whole tenon with the skew chisel. Let's take a look here. 
and I'm turning about 1400 RPM. And using a skew chisel in that orientation creates just a, an absolutely perfect, well-defined tenon. Now, please keep in mind that a skew chisel is primarily a cutting tool for spindle work. When you're turning between centers, all right, I'm turning a cross-grain bowl. And it's very important that we don't use this in a cutting orientation. So as I'm cutting my tenon down here, I've got my tool absolutely horizontal with the floor. Parallel with the floor, I should say. All right. Now I can also use this tool around the, uh, the bowl. Uh, and I do this sometimes. I make sure I've got a nice burr on the top of that tool and I'm going to just take that and just very very gently go around the, the edge right here. I've got some badly torn grain. Let's just see if we can take care of that. I got my tool horizontal. Very important especially out here because I've got end grain. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I think I've improved the, the surface of that a little bit. Anyway, let's move on to another tool with a symmetrical grind. As we are on the topic of uh, making a tenon, I'm going to use another symmetrical tool. Same bevel, top and bottom. This is a 1 8 inch, 3 millimeter parting tool. Now I've got a piece of a spalted tamarind chucked up into my lathe and I'm going to go through the basic steps of a box using different tools and I'll start with this tool here and make a tenon for my uh, shark jaws. And important to remember that this is a spindle turning so I can cut uh, cross grain in this orientation Now I'll try to hold this tool a little bit more in a cutting orientation with my tool handle down. And at the very end I'm going to angle it a little bit. To make a nice crisp valley down there for my tenon. And that's all there is to it. it makes a perfect tenon. All right, now I've got my camera readjusted and I want you to see the angle I've got the cutting edge ground at. And this point allows me to get into this area right here on that, on that spigot a little bit easier. This is a beading and parting tool and that's a 3 8 inch 10 millimeter tool and this particular parting tool I've got that ground straight across on the top and I'll show you that in action in just a little bit that's another one of those symmetrical tools okay now I'm fitting the lid to the base of my box and it just barely fits on there Okay, now I could use a number of different tools. I could use this beading and parting tool with a, just a straight across grind on the cutting edge going in there. Symmetrical tool. Here is another one that I, I just showed you a little bit. And the other end of that is a box scraper that goes into a some sort of a composite handle and I'm going to just kind of work on that and kind of sneak up on a good fit 
hold that perpendicular to that male tenon. Again, just take off a little whisper of wood. And I'm going to just keep working on that. <clears throat> Now this is a cutting tool, but I'm holding it so it's uh, parallel with the floor, or horizontal. Still have a ways to go. One thing you can do when you're fitting a lid to the base of a box is take about two millimeters on the very end of your male tenon, don't go back any further, and start to have a... And work your way up to a nice fit and that'll tell you the diameter that you need to have your entire male tenon. So I'll go back a little bit further Take my tool and just deburr that edge right there. Now I am going back just a little bit, but this is really what you need to do. You just have to be patient and work your way up to a good fit. But it's designed for this. Now I need to get right into that corner. So I'm going to tilt my tool just a little bit on edge. So I get rid of that little bit of wood in that vertex. Yeah. Now I could probably jam that on there. May not be able to get it off. But you got to be careful because you can split. Nice shavings there. And if I were really turning this little box, I would make this so I could jam the lid on and finish the lid while it's jammed onto the base. And to begin with, you have to really make sure that uh, the sides of your female recess are absolutely parallel and straight. All right, now the first tool I'm going to sharpen is this uh, the beading and parting tool. It's probably a quarter inch wide right here. And I've got the top of that on one of the bevels marked in black uh, magic marker. Okay, and that'll kind of show us where we're going with this sharpening right here. I've got my platform set to 25 degrees and I'm using uh, a Stuart Batty angle gauge that uh, is really, really nice when you're setting up your platform. So there's 25 degrees, and this area right here is a little bit of a concave shape, and that goes right up against your wheel. So I'm heading for a included angle of 50 degrees. All right, so let's turn the, the grinder on, we'll get going. All right, now one thing I've added on my platform are two lines that are perpendicular to my grinding wheel surface. And that's going to help me keep my, my tool perpendicular. Okay, I don't want to angle that at any point here. This particular tool, I grind this straight across. Okay. The cutting edge is absolutely perpendicular uh, to the sides. So let me show you a little bit more on sharpening. All right, now one more tool I should include in this group 
is uh, simply a skew chisel. In this particular skew chisel, I've got that ground to an included angle of about 35 degrees. It's really, really sharp. But uh, if you hold that on your tool rest absolutely horizontal, like that, you can use it as a scraper and a negative rake scraper. All right, now the next category of tools I'm going to show you are what I consider uh, tools with a round nose on them of some sort, maybe a half, half bull nose or a little bit more of a, a full grind on there if I can get these tools to cooperate here. Anyway, let's look at this one right here. Okay, this is one of my favorite tools, this is a box master scraper, and I'm not going to uh, talk a lot about grinds on every tool, but this particular tool, as you can see on the top bevel, it's a 25 degree angle, right here, 25 degrees, and on the bottom bevel right here, it's about a 40 degree angle. So if you add those together, it's got an included angle of 65 degrees which is in a good range for a negative rake scraper. This particular tool is a robust negative rake scraper. And I've only got the bottom bevel sharpened on this. And I would say that the angles are, are similar to the first one I showed you. I don't have the top bevel ground. To get that burr, if we sharpen the bottom right here, we're going to get a burr on the top of that tool. Now eventually I'm going to have to address that, but right now I'm going to save that nitriding surface as long as I can. Okay, and that's a dandy tool made by Robust. Uh, here's another tool that I really like. This is a Henry Taylor tool, and I've got the angles written right here. So the, the top is a 20 degree angle right here, and the bottom bevel is 55. So if you add those together, you have a uh, 75 degree included angle. All right, and again, these are what I would consider a round uh, ended scraper, good for the inside of a bowl or a box or something. Here's one that I uh, reshaped myself from a square end scraper. At one point this had a square end on it right there. And I've got a really, really long bevel right there, which is great for the inside of a box or something. I'm working on a little natural edge bowl. I have a couple possibilities for scraping the outside of this bowl. I could use a skew chisel. Now I'm going to use um, a round nose scraper, negative rake scraper. And the reason I'm going to use this tool over the skew chisel is because when I use this one, there's less edge contacting the wood than there is with the skew chisel. All right, now I may be splitting hairs. That may be just uh, too fine a distinction, but I think that it makes a difference. Now, um, safety in mind, I'm going to turn my speed up quite a bit on this, and I'm going to have a very, very slow traverse. And I've got a, a new sharpen on my tool. Well, I don't know if I can do much better. I certainly can't do a push cut and get that surface uh, cleaner than what it is right now. I can start sanding that if I want to at uh, 320, 400. So I'm gonna 
reverse this so I'll do a little bit of work on the inside of this little bowl. Alright, now I'm working on the inside of my little bowl here. It's still a little bit fat and ordinarily I turn these to completion. It's wet wood. I'm going to use the same negative rake scraper I used on the outside and this is a good time to practice. Since I have quite a bit of wood to take off there, I can just, uh, oh, you know, just kind of practice with this tool. Let's just take a look. I'm going to go down to that center, raise my handle, lower the cutting edge, very gently come around to the, to the rim. Here, a little bit of vibration on that. Now, I wouldn't do this with a traditional scraper. You see the shavings I'm getting are absolutely perfect. All right, now, with that negative rake scraper, that allows me to go pretty high up on the rim and do it safely. Now one of the benefits of using a negative rake scraper is I can just take off a very, very small amount of wood. And on the lid of my box here, I'm going to use this particular box master scraper. And this tool has a double end. I can use this end on the inside of a vessel or a box and I can take it out and reverse it and use it on the outside. So let's just clean up the, the end grain right here. I've got a very nice burr on the top of my tool. There, and that produces some nice shavings. And it especially cleans up this area right here on the outside where the connection is going to be for my base and my lid. One nice thing about this video is I'm going to end up with a nice box at the very end of it. So let me show you a couple tools I can use for the inside of the base to clean up the walls. I could use this particular box scraper, okay? And if I turned it around and used the other end, I could work on the on the outside of it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use this particular scraper. Again, I ground this from um, a square end scraper a while back. It's got a nice burr on there. So I'm gonna just uh, reach in there like that. And as you can, you can tell, I can really go a ways back in there with this nice long cutting edge on this negative brake scraper. Let's just do it. Hold the tool horizontal. Try to get my hand out of the way there. And I'm just putting a little pressure into the side of that. Uh... All right, now something really important. These negative rake scrapers have got to have a burr on the top of the, the top bevel, or it just doesn't cut very well. And I'm I can tell already that my burr is wearing off there. So let's go over on the grinder and we'll pick one of these, do a little bit of sharpening. Now the scrapers we saw just uh, previously have a symmetrical grind and they're a little bit easier to sharpen. The tool I'm going to show you now, this is a Boxmaster scraper, a dandy tool. So there's the the top of the tool, that's how you would hold that on your tool rest. Okay, and the top angle right here is 25 degrees, and I have that set on my 
my platform. This is a little bit um, more difficult to sharpen, not, not a whole lot, and you don't sharpen these all that much. Okay. Well, you might sharpen that lower bevel, but anyway, uh, I'm going to sharpen the top of that, and I've got this also marked in Magic Marker, so we'll, we'll go ahead and sharpen the top of that, and I'll readjust and sharp, sharpen the lower bevel. Now you'll notice on, on these particular tools, I'm holding that down onto my platform very securely. Okay, and all I'm doing is rotating that. So once I hit, uh, there we go, once I hit the cutting edge, I'm done sharpening. Now what I'll do when I go back to re-grind this tool or re-sharpen it, I'm going to sharpen only the lower bevel. Well, let me set that up. And we'll just do a little bit of sharpening on that. Alright, so what I've done here is I've sharpened the lower bevel. The bevel on the underside of the tool. And ordinarily that's the, the bevel I go back to. And that gives me a burr on the top cutting edge and I can feel that burr and I know I've hit the cutting edge when I can feel that burr. Now I'm ready to do some turning. Now what I'm going to share with you right now is from a Cindy Drozda video. It was actually one of her remote demonstrations and she was using a lot of negative rake scrapers. Now it's important that this angle, this uh, included angle for the top bevel and the bottom bevel are less than 90 degrees and Cindy uh, indicates that the optimum angle is between 40 and 70 degrees. I think if you get much more than 70, 75, 80, uh, that's not going to cut as efficiently and below 40 it's probably going to get a little bit aggressive. Okay so let's take a look at some specialty scrapers. All right, the last category I'm going to take a look at are what I call specialty negative rake scrapers. And each one of these really is designed for a particular purpose. Let's take a look at this one here. This tool is made by Cindy Drozda. Okay, and you can find that on her website. And I'm going to show examples of when these particular tools are used. And this tool right here is very similar. It's got the same shape. So with these tools, you can cut on the end, pushing into end grain. And you can also cut right here. You can uh, cut on the side of that tool, maybe on the opening of a box. All right. Now, why do I have this notch here? This notch is just a result of sharpening. At one point, this particular side went all the way to the end. But after I sharpened it a number of times, it created this uh, kind of a dog leg, if you will. So there's the bottom of the, the tool. It's got a bevel here. It's got a bevel on the side. And it's got a bevel on the top, which is probably 20 degrees or so. What's important when you sharpen this particular tool, this corner must meet at that point. And that's uh, pretty important when you're sharpening that tool. All right, now, one of the tools I use a lot, especially in thread chasing, is this kind of a tool right here. All right, that is a, a box scraper. And this one has a flat top, it's a traditional box scraper. Now this other tool, this one, <laughs> this tool right here, has the same shape, only it's a negative rake scraper. 
So I've got a bevel on the top. There's a bevel on the very front of that tool. And I'll show you the bottom. Same thing, bevel on the bottom, bevel right here. So uh, what I call this a, a box scraper, I can go all the way to the bottom of a box, but I can also cut on the side, say on the opening, if I'm trying to uh, connect a lid to a base, this is a really, really nice tool. Now what's the difference between this traditional scraper with one flat top and one bevel um, is that this one can be a little bit more aggressive. With this one, I can take off a very, very small amount of wood. I can just take off powder, <laughs> if you will. All right, one last tool, and I've got two or three of these around the, the shop. This would be for cleaning out the inside of a box. Um, there's the top bevel, and there's the bottom bevel, and I can get underneath the inside of a, a box lid and, uh, and reach areas that I couldn't with any other tool. All right, now I'm just about ready to part off my lid from my base on this box I'm going to work on. And I'm going to show you another tool that I have ground a secondary bevel on that, making it a negative rake scraper. Now this is a, a very narrow parting tool. This is one of my favorites. It's an Ashley Isles tool. Very thin on the end. Now let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you the tip of this tool. So there's a side view. There's the top bevel right there. And I've got ground a, just a very, very slight secondary bevel on the bottom of this tool. And a parting tool can be a little bit aggressive. And if you're not careful, they can get away from you. So you have to be careful, and this is a good idea, just to make this tool a little bit more friendly. Now let's part off this box. All right, now this is what I would consider a specialty tool. This is made by Boxmaster Tools. This is an excellent, excellent negative rake scraper. Now on this end, this is a box scraper. And I showed you earlier um, a couple box scrapers, one with a traditional flat top. I use these a lot for thread chasing and this is a double-ended tool. On this end, this would be used for uh, working on a tenon from this direction. So I'm going to put this back in the handle. And I got this into a, this is actually a Stuart Batty uh, collet handle. So we'll do just a little bit of hollowing with this tool. And I'm going to hold this tool horizontal and I'm going to just pull it towards me. Okay, so that, that tool cuts pretty well from the side. What I'm doing is I'm establishing the recess for the lid of my box. Now that cuts pretty well on the side of the tool. It also cuts as you push it directly into the end grain. Now 
and you can see from the shavings those are uh, indicative of more of a cut than a scrape. All right, now I'm going to show you this tool one more time. This would be my recess for the lid, okay? And as I fit that, I'm going to use this tool and use this edge right here. And I'm going to hold that as uh, parallel to the bedways as I can. Horizontal. And, and just take off a little bit of wood right there. And I can... I can either push it in or I can pull it towards me. And again, the shavings are an indication of a, a very sharp tool. And that's a good example of when you might use this tool. It's really, really excellent for this particular application. Now I'm going to show you a couple other tools that are really, really ideal for this particular approach. This is a larger tool and this is a smaller tool. These are specialty tools. This one is a Cindy Drozda tool. Right there is her name. And Cindy makes uh, some marvelous tools and accessories. So, as you see, uh, this is a, a negative rake scraper. Bevels on the bottom. And also in this area right here, that cutting edge. And on the top. So I can use this tool not only to true up the inside of my recess, but I can also go down with this cutting edge right here and clean up the top of that uh, box lid. Holding my tool horizontally. And you can see it just takes off a whisper of wood. And I go down far enough where I'm hitting the, the edge right here of my lid and, and cleaning that up. But again, as you're fitting your lid to your base, this is just an excellent tool. You can just fine tune this by taking off just a, a little whisper of wood right there. All right. While I'm in this uh, orientation, I'm going to show you one more specialty tool. And I believe this started out as a Dale Nish box scraper. And I may have added the negative rake bevel on the top of that tool. I'm pretty sure I did that. But this is an excellent tool for just, you know, cleaning up the bottom of your box or the bottom of this lid as I have this right here. See how this tool does? I'm going to mark the very center of the bottom of this right here. And to eliminate that little nub down there, I'm going to raise my handle just a little bit so the cutting edge is below that. And then I'm going to lower my handle and then swing my tool. And I can come back and hit that area again. And I'm getting some excellent shavings. Now I would think that I could probably start sanding with 400 grit on that. And this is not exactly punky wood, but it's, uh, uh, you know, it's got a lot of nice features in there and figure and stuff. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I can start sanding that. All right, I'm gonna use this tool. And it's very similar to the one I was just using, this uh, 
Cindy draws the tool. It's a little bit bigger. It's newly sharpened with a nice burr on the top of that. And it's got a long bevel, fairly long bevel back here. Now I have to make sure that the, the bevel isn't uh, lined up with that tool rest. I need to be beyond that. So let's just uh, clean up this surface here. And to make sure my grain lines up, I don't want to take off too much wood. So hold my tool horizontal and just present that tool very gently to the, the edge. And as you can see, I'm taking off dust. So if I want to come around and I can clean up the inside of that female recess, just slightly pulling that towards me and pushing it in. Well, now let's go take a look at one of these and do a little sharpening. All right, now I think you get the idea with the sharpening. You can figure these angles out, set your platform to a particular angle. Again, this tool, which is really good for the inside of a box, box lid, I'm going to hold that parallel with that magic marker line to make sure that the front of my tool is uh, perpendicular to the sides. All right. And I'm not going to sharpen the top of that. All I really need to do is sharpen the underside, the front bevel and that side bevel, and then I'll get a burr on the top. And that's really critical. So let's do a little sharpening on this. Alright, I've taken a magic marker to show where we've been with this tool. So hold that flat to the platform, parallel with my magic marker line. So there you have it. I just uh, established a very nice burr on the top of that tool. I can readjust my platform and sharpen this bevel down here and uh, I'll have that tool all sharpened.